Hey, John Voight. Few people in the world have had the career of this guy. Look at these great movies. Midnight Cowboy, Runaway Train. Hey, The Champ, one of my favorites. And more recently, Ray Donovan. And the list goes on and on. You may also know him as a great friend and great supporter of President Donald Trump. Not everybody in Hollywood likes that. It's one of the reasons why we really like John Voight. He's talented, he's gutsy, and he's our guest on Newsmax. John Voight, welcome back to Newsmax. How are you, sir? Hey, Greg, how are you? Terrific, and it's great to see you. Um, hey, listen, I know you've uh, received an Academy Award. Uh, what did you think of last night's Academy Awards? Well, they had a tough go because, you know, very few people have seen those films in a theater. And, you know, and just checking them in critically and just seeing what what's going on here and there. People didn't have a chance to sit down and really enjoy those films. And that's that's tough for all the performers and all of the people responsible for those films. So it was a, it, it's, a, it's a tough thing for them to have to come to this year and, and have their work in this situation. But, you know, God hasn't stopped making talent. They're all very gifted people, and, and, uh, and they had a wonderful night last night, I'm sure, everybody. You know, they are very talented people, but more and more it seems like they're working in a box. It's a box designed by, I'm not exactly sure who's putting it together, but it says that you have to speak in a certain way and you have to act a certain way, and I'm not talking about the craft of acting, and you have to support certain candidates. And I know Hollywood's always kind of been a little bit to the left, but it seems off the charts right now. Um, is that the case? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, let's face it. The, uh, the, uh, the, the Democrat Party, which is uh, obviously in, in, in uh, sway now, uh, has been overtaken by the left. And uh, it's and and it's very anti-American, actually. Um, so it's a tough time right now. We're in a in a battle for the country. I want to take a look. America seems to be tuning out. You mentioned COVID. I understand that's a problem, but it looks like they're down from fifty percent since last time. That's a big, big hit. You know, mm -hmm. you know these uh, these performers, and yeah. they they love the art. I'm not sure that they are as political as they're being portrayed. Like, where is this coming from? Do they all naturally hate Donald Trump? Is that it? I mean, if you want to be an actor, what do you care about who's in the White House? I mean, you know, to a, to a certain point. Where is this coming from, this impetus, this push to go so far to the left? Well, I'm going to go back a little bit. I grew up in the 60s, you know. I mean, I mean, I started my career in the late 60s, and... And uh, that was a very destructive time for our country. And, and it started out with the, the, the trauma of us losing our, our very popular uh, president, John Kennedy. And then it seemed like uh, many elements came forth to, to, uh, to dis disrupt off of that, that trauma. And uh, one of them of, certainly was the KGB, but th there was a... Uh, there was just a big influx of uh, negativity. And it, it is marked, there's a book, um, David Horowitz is a wonderful fellow and a, and a great uh, historian and was active during that period. And he made a big transition. He was raised as a communist and then by his parents. And, and then he, uh, he, he was the editor of Ramparts magazine. And then he had a, a really... Uh, an eye-opening, very traumatic event of his own, and he he turned at that time. But he knew all the players, and I would say that anybody who's really interested, and people say, I'm interested in the truth and all of that. If you're really interested in the truth, pick up uh, his book, uh, Radical Son, and another one by his friend Peter Collier and he. Uh, it's called The Destructive Generation. And those that'll give you a good portrait of what was going on in the 60s. And it was a takeover by the left. And, it's, and we've seen it, uh, you know, d during the Reagan years, uh, there was a little bit of a pause. And then after the Soviet Union collapsed, everybody relaxed. And, uh, and then the left made further inroads and finally took over. And that's what we're dealing with right now. Well, you mentioned Reagan, Ronald Reagan. 
great president, and there's a movie coming out next year. You're in it. It's called Reagan, very simply. It's set to be released in 2022. Uh, Dennis Quaid plays Reagan, and oh, we've got some footage here of it under in production. Uh, let's take a look here. Uh, Quaid looks pretty good. And tell us a little bit about your character. You actually play a KGB agent. Yeah, that's why I probably mentioned the KGB because I knew what they were doing at the time in the 60s from the research that I did and from having been in the 60s. But anyway, I play a character who is a KGB, uh, kind of a former KGB guy who's kind of turned and he's asked by a young fellow coming up, what happened during that time? Why did we give up without a fight? Talking about the Soviet Union. And I sit him down and tell him the story of Ronald Reagan. And, uh, uh, and, I, and to, to that degree, I'm in a, a strong part of the film. Sir, you uh, had a special relation, have a special relationship with Donald Trump. He awarded you the Presidential Medal of Freedom, richly award, uh, deserved, of course quite a moment for you. Um, yeah. Tell us a little bit about why, why you thought he was so good for America. I guess you're like the rest of us, you liked his policies, but you know more about him than we do. Uh, what was it about Donald Trump that got your attention? Well, there's a whole lot of things about him, but uh, uh, I mean, he, he's an answer to so many of the problems, and that's why he's taken so much heat because he's very effective as a leader. He's the real thing. He's a real leader. Uh, he's a problem solver. He has unlimited energy and uh, he has great instincts. And all the promises that he made uh, coming to the first election in uh, 2016 were followed through on, every one. So, and, and that's quite a unique thing. <clears throat> they say, you know, if you want to, say, so this is unprecedented, this, this event. I say, that's unprecedented, that somebody means what they say and, and follows through. So anyway, all of, for all of those reasons, and look what he accomplished. Look at the amazing accomplishments of Donald Trump. Uh, he was a true friend of Israel, of course, and the Abraham Accords were bringing that part of the world to a peace it's never seen. And, uh, and he fixed our economy, had everybody at work, and, uh, and, uh, and did, did so many things, like just even visiting the White House, the way he took care of the White House. And, yeah. and uh, you know, brought Christmas back to us and all, all these lovely things that he did. But uh, also on the front of interacting with leadership across the world, he was quite amazing. Uh, he, he, the way he handled himself with all of the, the so-called villains of the world, and there's some dangerous people out there, of course, uh, he was able to, to uh, make, uh, you know, get relationships with each of these guys, and they had great respect for him. And, uh, of course, he, he dealt with the, the villainy of Iran in a very specific way, and now we're returning Iran to the position of, of getting a nuclear weapon. This is a, this is a horror. And there are many, many uh, things that are happening right now that we, we have to, uh, you know, <laughs> we have to put up a fight against because, uh, for instance, our economy, the way they're yeah. throwing money around, the, uh, eventually this will break, break us down. Last thing, sir, your legacy is secure. You're a Hollywood great. You don't have to do anything ever again uh, to be a historical you, figure in Hollywood. <laughs> but I'm curious, have you taken a hit in terms of opportunities because you're a vocal Trump supporter? I mean, the cancel culture, we hear about it every day. Um, what has been the backlash for you in Hollywood? Well, Greg, look, uh, people hire their, their buddies, and uh, I'm in a situation where I have, I have a few, still have a few friends in Hollywood, but uh, it's, it's difficult for people who announce they're conservative, yes, for sure. But, uh, but that, that has to be now, you know, we have to, Make a stand. You have to state who you are. You can't be afraid. You can't cower for the, for this thing because it hurts a lot of people coming up. We we you have to make a little bit of a stand here now. Not a little bit. I say these words. I say a little bit of a stand, but you, you got to stand up against this stuff. It's not right, you know. And it's it's really uh, what I feel is. Look, I'm an older fella, and uh, 
I'm not going to be around forever. And if I can do something to help the future generations yet unborn to taste the American dream and to have the freedoms that, that were fought for and bled for over time uh, that I received as a, as a young man coming up, if I can do anything toward that, I'm going to do it. So uh, that's more, much more important to me than any of this other small political stuff. I mean, pol politics of, uh, of, of the, small, the small politics, the big politics, sure. I'm in, you know. Well, you know, someone of your caliber, your stature, uh, on our side, it's inspiring and uh, kind of uh, reinforces uh, us. And uh, thank you very much. John Voigt, continued success. All the best. Okay, Greg, thank you. You bet, you bet. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe, too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.